Hey guys, Sensor here, and in today's Anthem video, I wanted to go over this Survival Colossus build. Now first I'm going to go over the abilities or gear and weapons, and then I'll go over the components and then show gameplay. So the very first thing you want to have for the heavy assault launcher is the best defense. This thing is amazing. For one, it's just an upgraded siege artillery. It's just a missile, basically, that you shoot out and hit people with. It can combo. It's quick doesn't take too long to come back and the biggest thing is for the masterwork legend and legendary version hitting an enemy will restore 35 percent of your armor or health which you know it's the same thing so this is this is huge especially as a colossus when you have full masterwork components and other things that give you higher armor you're going to get a lot of it back it's going to be really hard to die this is absolutely the best thing to use in a survival build for Colossus. There's a reason why it's called the best defense. And then for the Ordnance Launcher, there are a few choices. I prefer the Vault-Tec Dome. Vasic's Arc. Arc is good too because you can, you know, move around. It's, it's the classic lightning cool. You move around, it'll hit people, cause explosions. But I prefer Vault-Tec Dome for this build because the shock coil will shock everything that's around you. You can move while doing it. Now you can't do other stuff but you can still move around while doing it. And the Vaultic Dome version will freeze enemies. That's huge, especially for survivability, because when they're all frozen, they can't do any damage to you. And you can just combo. They're all around you anyway. Just use a melee attack and boom. The combo is ridiculous. You can get combos off of just using Vaultic Dome just as well as using the Flamethrower Lightning Coil combo. Now for weapons, you have a couple choices. The only one that I would say for sure you want to get is the Balm of Gavinicus. Because this is the only one that really affects your health and survivability for the most part. It is a Lurker Grenade Launcher, so you have to manually detonate the mines, you know, the grenades that you set out. But if you hit two enemies, you get 25% health back. So you, you can use this in addition to the best defense. I mean, the best... The best defense is going to be your primary source of recovering health for the most part and, you know, keep them frozen. But you can also use the Bomb of Gavinicus to get more health back if you happen to need more or just if it's on cooldown, you know, if your best defense is on cooldown, use this and then you can get some health back. So that's really nice. Um, as for the other weapon, it really depends. Auto cannons. I like using auto cannons and grenade launchers or at least, you know, one of the, one of the two on a Colossus because... Only a Colossus can use those weapons. Now, when it comes to the auto cannons, I personally only have two of the three. I have the Last Stand, which is a Mauler. Mauler is my favorite archetype of auto cannon, but I don't think the Last Stand is that great because what it does is Gambler's Wrath, which when your health, it says when suit health declines, all weapon damage is increased by 75% for 10 seconds. That's all weapon damage, so that's not bad for other weapons. However, 75% compared to like the 100% you can get on the other ones. And it says when Sooth Health declines, I thought that meant it's like basically once you lose health, you'll get that bonus. No, it only happens when you get to low health. So you're only going to get that bonus at low health anyway. And it's just, it's not that great. Now, the other one that I have is the Fist of Straw. This one's actually pretty good. It's the Cloudburst, which is probably the standard auto cannon that most people use and basically hitting enemies will increase weapon damage by 10 percent for five seconds and it stacks up to 10 so you can get to 100 percent damage bonus this is decent it's just that overall i feel like i do more damage with something like the cycle of pain now again it's a auto cannon so it shoots a lot faster you know it's got a lot more ammo especially if you have bonuses but it's not a bad weapon it's just I feel like there could be better ones depending on the rolls you get. Now the other one that I don't have is called uh, Endless Siege. That one is a upgraded torrent. It, what it does is it gives 100% extra ammo and damage just by default. So you're going to be shooting that thing forever and always doing the maximum amount of damage that it can do. So if you have an Endless Siege autocannon and you want to use autocannons, that's the one that I would use. That's the one that I would try and craft. And then of course bomb of Gavinicus as the other one now besides that if you don't have either of these or whatever the case may be what I recommend doing is getting weapons that have armor and shield on them 
And if it's uh, auto cannon, try and also get you know extra ammo or whatever. Damage is decent, and I mean you, you don't you want to be able to do extra damage. But the main thing here is to survive and keep the enemies, you know, from from killing your teammates basically. So I'm actually using a cycle of pain, which is I kind of like the machine gun. What it does is weak points increase uh, weapon rate of fire. And it stacks up to 10, so it starts shooting like crazy. It basically starts shooting like an auto cannon. But the main reason I use this gun right now is I have one that rolled 20% max shields and 60% max armor. So that's 60% extra health just for having this gun. And then my bomb of Gavinicus, of course, gives me uh, armor back, but it also gives me 18% max armor. You know, that could be better, but it's got higher. It also has higher magazine size and damage. I would probably try and roll another one once I get more, once I unlock the blueprints, get more master embers. But yeah, if you if you just like guns or if you don't, you know, have the bomb of Gavinicus, whatever the case may be, whichever guns you do use, try and get shield and armor perks on them, because that'll increase your survivability even more. It's ridiculous. Before I got the bomb of Gavinicus, I was using I think a Divine Vengeance. Yeah, I was using Divine Vengeance, so it, that gave me 70% shields and a 9% max armor, and that's that's huge. That's a huge increase. That mixed with, and that's just the guns, and I'll go over the components next, but yeah, armor and shields are what you want to try and get on your weapons. Also on your abilities if you can, for the best defense specifically, gear speed. I believe gear speed is like cooldown rate, so it'll come back faster. You want gear speed for the best defense, or, you know, it's, this is a suit-wide thing, so this, this will work on anything. So in your other ability, your ordnance launcher, you can also try and get gear speed. But the main thing, see, I got gear speed on this one, well, RB speed, which is my heavy assault launcher, because you want to get this back as quick as possible, because this is going to give you a lot of your health. So the faster you can use the best defense, the more often you're able to heal, and the less likely you are to actually go down. Now, for the components, there's only about three, I would say, that you absolutely need to have for this build. Yeah, about three. One, ablative shielding. This is the... Um, just It just gives you uh, more armor and shields. Now, I don't know if there's a glitch or whatever, but none of these... All these give the same amount of armor and shields, and I th thought... It's been a while, but I thought... A couple Colossus components while leveling gave more health and shields than normal, but whatever the case is, it's still, the secondary effect is nice because when a shield is broken, then your damage resistance is increased by 25% for 5 seconds. Of course, survival build, you know, taking less damage, you definitely want that. Now, your shield breaking probably won't happen as often, so it's not like an amazing masterwork component, but compared to other ones... It's still pretty decent, so when that does happen, you'll get more defense. Grand Entrance, uh, for the secondary effect, not so much. It's okay. It, it Basically, if you hard land, going like way up in the sky and then coming down, you cause an explosion. Not that useful, except for in certain situations. But the biggest thing is, it's a masterwork. So for one, you're going to give a lot of armor and shields, and this one increases duration of support abilities. Um, so, oh yeah, I forgot to go over the, the support ability. The support ability that I use is Shield Pulse. Now, Battlecry is good, and if you want to be a traditional tank, this is good to have because you can force them to attack you, and then that'll be, you know, the enemies will be less likely to take out your teammates. But the range, I don't think, is that far, and I think that the Shield Pulse is going to provide much more utility to your team than Battlecry. Because Shield Pulse reduces incoming damage by 33%, and it does it for your entire team, you know, as long as they're close by. And then, of course, the duration is 10, with that component to increase duration, then it's even better. So you'll you'll have it up more, more often. So 33% reduction in damage across everyone I think is much better than forcing enemies to attack you and of course it makes you tankier as well and then so yeah that's why I use the grand entrance because it increases the support ability duration by 50 percent 
And now the other one that's really nice is the Demolition Tribute. It'll increase your shield damage while sprinting. So like when you have your shield up and you know you sprint at people and you knock them down, well that's increased by 300%. And then defeating an enemy with melee instantly gives you 20% armor. So yet another health increasing, you know, recovery ability, basically. So you have so many ways to increase your max health, to recover your health. Going down as a Colossus is going to be really difficult unless you're playing like really hard content or just... Or get frozen, because if you get frozen in this game, you're done, pretty much. It's so ridiculous. But, yeah, giving giving you... And you'll be doing melee a lot, so... Especially because of the way this build is set up, so this is perfect. You'll be getting a lot of melee kills, and they all will give you health back. Now, the other ones are just really pretty much whatever you want, but I would recommend having all Masterwork components. For the Colossus, I think this is more important because the difference in armor and shields that you get... Let me show you. For a Masterwork, and especially if you can get Legendaries as well, any equip as many Legendaries as you might have, even though it might not be many, and then the rest Masterwork. Because you get 10,897 armor, 4,329 shields for a Masterwork component. And then look how, look how much that drops. Almost like... About 8,000. You lose like 8,000 health just from going down to Epic. And then like almost 3,000 shields. That's a huge loss. And I don't think any of the bonuses will make up for that. So the only thing I recommend for the other three is Masterwork. Just try and grind six Masterwork components out and then equip them. Now, the ones I do have are still pretty decent. Combo damage is increased. If you detonate a combo, your ability damage is increased by 40%. That'll happen a lot because of your setup. Uh, this one, not huge, but your assault launchers increased. And then when you defeat an enemy with the assault launcher, or just defeating an enemy in general, will increase your assault launcher damage. So that's pretty decent. And then ordnance launcher damage is increased. And then hitting an enemy with your LB, which is going to be your shock coil, will increase heat dissipation. Which, so you won't overheat as much. Again, nothing too amazing here, but these are just the other ones that I currently have. Now, the main thing you're going to want to do is run into combat, use your shock, I mean, yeah, the shock coil, the vault Dome, melee, and then pretty much, I would just save the best defense for when you lose health. There's really no reason to use it unless you want to combo something from far away, but I think it's better just to save this for when you lose health. When you have like half or lower health, hit this. You're going to get most of your health back. Meleeing people while they're frozen in the Voltec Dome. You'll be getting a lot of combos and getting kills. Those combos will still count as melee kills. And you'll be getting health back. And then again, use the Bomb of Galvinicus when you either you can't use best defense or you just want a little bit of extra health without using the best defense. So it's a very very sort of support just survival build the whole purpose of this colossus is to not die to do everything you can to recover your health to give defense and of course use shield pulse i wouldn't use it on cooldown but use it when you know there's going to be a lot of incoming damage so that's a, that's it for the actual explanation of the guy next is going to be some gameplay i'll go over a little bit more uh explain a little bit more of it in action and then i'll just let the rest of the stronghold play out all right so i'm in the tyrant mine stronghold and yeah here's basically how it works you just go in there and freeze them as you can see they can't do anything you just melee um follow up with your weapon of choice I'm kind of using the grenade just because, but yeah, if you can get two of them, then you'll get health back. But it, it's sometimes kind of hard to do with the bomb of Gavinicus. You know, hit them with hit two people at a time. But your main thing is just literally going in here like this, moving around, freezing them, combo. You see how much health I have? Like this is insane. And of course, I can just do this and go around freezing and meleeing. That's pretty much it. Using your weapons, I'm using the bomb, 
that I'm using the Cycle of Pain. Oh yeah, I wanted to show a little bit more. Here's, here's Cycle of Pain at max. Like, look how fast that's shooting. Now, I might be able to get the bomb here. Yeah, see, like I said, it's kind of hard, but... Yeah, there you go. See, I got all that health back. Just from the grenade launcher. And then shield pulse. I'm just going to use it because I'm not really taking too much damage. But you can see it on the left side of the screen, how long it lasts. And it's, you know, pretty decent increase. And I'm losing a little bit of health, so I just use best defense and boom. It's all back. And you can just pretty much keep that up for quite a long time. And then keep comboing. So it's it's just, it's really nice. But yeah, it's just, it's going to be hard to die using this build. Especially when you have all the things, like the weapons and stuff. And it's pretty fun to just go around and freezing people. Oh, you just disappeared. Oh, okay, they're all dead. But yeah, it's pretty fun just go around freezing people. Oh, I'm going to lose this thing. I didn't realize I picked it up. And then meleeing them for the combo. And then best defense. It's so satisfying just hitting somebody with that. Um, you know, missile, and then you get all your health back. Ah, yep, I was right there and fell off. And then, of course, just running around shocking people to death with this and freezing them is really cool, too. But that's all I wanted to really showcase in terms of, you know, the guide portion of this. So I'm just going to let the rest of the stronghold play out. But if you like the video and the build, then please consider leaving a like, subscribe for future content, and thanks for watching.
tyrant's legs. Oh, no more scorpion talk, please.